glory to Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today, brothers and sisters, we are talking about unicity or oneness. In the dictionary, we see unicity, the quality or state of being unique of its kind. And so being unique, one of a kind, it pertains also to oneness. Let us go and see how oneness is defined. Oneness, the quality or state or fact of being one. We now start out in the book of Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. I want to bring your attention to and. Did you catch this? And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Notice how... In order to have the first day, which is a unit, a basic fundamental time unit, you must have both the evening and the morning. In other words, after the evening, you cannot yet call that time period a day unless you also have considered the morning as well in combination with the evening. And therefore, the time unit called day which is a basic building block, a day, though it is one day, it incorporates the evening and the morning, but yet it is one day. Let us look in the lexicon at the word first. So we are looking at the lexicon here, verse five, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Let us look at first. First is Echad. It means the number one. And when we go back to the text, it also means here properly united, that is one, or as an ordinal first. And when we go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 5, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And so what I'm getting at here is that one day is a unit, but yet within that one day, you have both the evening and the morning. And if you should lack one of these two elements, you do not have a first day. The two elements, evening and morning, were necessary in the first day. We are talking about unicity. We are talking about oneness. We are talking about a day that we're going to look at in terms of the day requiring both the evening and the morning to be called a day, to be one day. Let us now move to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And so there are going to be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. But remember that we have just seen that there needs to be an evening and a morning for one day to be called a day. And therefore, in one day per se, you have an evening and you have a morning. You have a time of clarity, of light, and a time of obscurity, of darkness. And both taken together, if we take our reference today in a 24-hour period for a day, you will have a time of light and a time of darkness. 
and the two together form one day. And so though there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, both together form a block, a unit, a time interval that is one, one day. And so we continue reading in verse 14, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. For the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. But this does not interfere with our train of thought here. We're just saying that a day as defined as a time unit, time interval, requires that both the evening and the morning should have passed. Both the evening and the morning are required for the forming of the unit called day. They're both part of it. And if you take out one, you don't have a day. Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 16, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now notice one thing. In verse 15, we are told that the lights in the firmament of the heaven, they have a purpose, and that is to give light upon the earth. And so keep that in mind. All the lights in the firmament of the heaven are to give light. Now in verse 16, we speak about two of these lights that are great. They're greater than the other lights. There are two of them. And amongst these two, relative one to the other, there will yet be one greater than the other. And so the sun, who is to rule the day, is going to be greater than the lesser light, the moon, that rules the night. But notice one thing, both the sun and the moon are to give light upon the earth. Because in verse 15, it says that all the lights in the firmament of the heaven are to give light upon the earth. So don't forget that this applies also to the sun and the moon, though they be great lights. And so now those two great lights, greater than the rest of the lights in the firmament of the heaven, the sun and the moon now, those two great lights, between themselves, the sun is greater and the moon is lesser. But yet... Though the moon is lesser than the sun, it still gives light, just like the rest of the lights in the firmament of the heaven. Both of them give light. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40 and 41, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. And this was established in Genesis chapter one, as we have read, that in terms of hierarchy, that the sun and the moon are great lights, as we can see in Genesis chapter one, verse 16, and that between the sun and the moon, the sun has a greater glory and the moon has a lesser glory but both of them have greater glory than the rest of the lights in the firmament of the heaven. Now, all of them have a purpose to give light, but the sun will give light during the day and the moon will give light during the night. And so the sun is to be a light. And so the moon still gives light in the darkness. And so brothers and sisters, we are talking about unicity. We are going somewhere. And we have established that a day as a unit needs to comprise the evening and the morning. We go back to Genesis chapter one at verse five. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day, both evening and morning were the first day. And so the evening, the time of darkness, and the morning, the time of light, both of them taken together were the first day. They were one, one unit. And we then saw further down in Genesis chapter one that verses 15 and 16 established that during the time of light, it is the sun who presides 
and that during the evening time or the time of darkness, it is the moon who presides. But though it be a time of darkness for the moon, still the purpose and goal of the moon is to give light. Because in verse 15, it says, let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And further, as we can see in verse 14, God said the lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night within that time period of a day that we have defined as a time interval as one day, one 24 hour period in our present time. And so in our 24 hour period, the sun and the moon divide the day from the night. And so here in verse 14, when we see the word day, it means the time of light. It doesn't mean a day as a full unit comprising both the time of light and the time of darkness. See, this is the difference in verse five. Let us go to it in verse five. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So speaking of a 24 hour period, if you will, comprising the evening and the morning, the time of darkness and the time of light. But when we go down further in verse 14, the lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, it's speaking about the time of clarity and light during the daytime versus the nighttime. But the day here in verse 14 pertains to the morning, if you will, and the word night here in verse 14 pertains to the time of evening, the time of darkness. To confirm that, let's go to the lexicon. Verse five, and the evening and the morning were the first day. What is the meaning of day? Yom, a day as the warm hours. Whether literally from sunrise to sunset or from one sunset to the next. So as you can see, there are different meanings. Day as opposed to night, but also day 24 hour period. So according to the context, you must differentiate day as daytime or day as a 24 hour period. Day as opposed to night, day 24 hour period. So we will have to interpret this word in context. So this is the word day in verse five. And we're going to look at it also in verse 14. So as you can see, it's the same definition. So we can use either day as opposed to night or day as a 24 hour period. Very well, let us go back to the plain King James Version. To set things in order, brothers and sisters, we go to the top. Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, meaning the daytime. And the darkness he called night, meaning the nighttime. And the evening, that is the time of night, the time of darkness, and the morning, that is the time of day, of light, were the first day. Both these moments of light and darkness taken together combine to form the first day. The first day, as we saw first, is one unit of a day. And so the basic time period that is called a day, and that is one day, is made up of the evening and the morning. Both elements are present. And as we had mentioned, brothers and sisters, a day can be a thousand years or a thousand years a day in the eyes of the Lord. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. But that does not interfere again with our line of reasoning, 
because we're just establishing that the unit of a day comprises both the evening and the morning. And so subsequently, brothers and sisters, we moved to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And as we saw, we have to interpret day as meaning daytime or a full day, 24 hours, comprising both the daytime and the nighttime, according to context. And in verse 14, we have established that the lights in the firmament of the heaven will divide the daytime from the nighttime. And in verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So the important aspect here is that they give light. That's their purpose. Verse 16, and God made two great lights. Two lights have a greater status, a greater standing, the greater light to rule the day, the sun, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. He made the stars also. And so both the sun and the moon must give light. The sun will preside at the daytime and the moon will preside at the nighttime. But when you have the evening, the nighttime, and the morning, the daytime taken together, you have one day, a unit, one day. And so having established this, brothers and sisters, we are looking at unicity and we are looking at the nature of beings having different facets, having different manifestations of them being observed. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And so the man and his wife shall be one flesh. The evening and the morning shall be one day. The man and his wife shall be one flesh. You see the analogy. And we know that the man is established to rule over his wife such that he has a greater glory than she has, according to the hierarchy set up by the Lord. And so we can make an analogy here with the sun and the moon. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I would have you know, that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And so we have established that the man has a greater glory, being the head, and the head of Christ is God. And so God would have a greater glory than Christ, because God is the head of Christ. Now, let us keep in mind this analogy of the sun and the moon both of them to give light, but one during the daytime and another during the nighttime, and both of them taken together actually accomplish the same ministry, therefore, of giving light, but at a different time during the 24-hour day. And so there is one day, one 24-hour period of time, and within that 24-hour period of time, both the sun and the moon come to give light, but they are different aspects of that which gives light, but they are different representatives, but they are different manifestations of one source of light, meaning light comes at one time from the sun, whereas at one time the light comes from the moon, but there is always light and there is but one light but the manifestation of what will provide the light is going to be different, though the ministry of providing light is one. And so the sun and the moon combine together to provide light. And they do that at different time intervals, one during the daytime, one during the nighttime. But they are one in accomplishing that mission, being the greater of the lights. Likewise, we're going to see that we can make the same analogy between the Father and the Son. We have already seen that the Father is the head of the Son, and so he has a greater glory. How is that? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 17, Yeshua, Jesus, says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? 
There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And so here what you must understand is that because we have established a hierarchy between the sun and the moon, you can make an analogy here that the Lord Yahushua, Jesus, would be the manifestation of light that occurs in the time of darkness. And he would be the moon because he touches on the things of the flesh. That's why he says, don't call me good because he partakes in the things of the flesh and that makes him lesser than the father because the flesh that he has put on is sinful flesh. That's why he says there is none good but one that is God the father. Indeed, in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 to 18, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Verse 15, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Verse 18, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. And so therefore, if we stay in our train of thought, I'm trying to make you see how, if we associate Yahushua Jesus with the moon, having a ministry to give light, but at a time of darkness, by coming into the world and saying that he is the light of the world, but yet claiming that he doesn't have the glory of the Father, and therefore being of a lesser glory, he is the moon, and he gives light in the time of darkness. In the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, we go to verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. And so the Lord Yahushua, Jesus, was sent into the world as a light. And because he came in a spiritual time of darkness, you have the image of him shining his light in the nighttime, in the evening. And so that makes him the lesser light which again correlates to him saying he doesn't have the glory of the Father because he touches on the things of the flesh. But as long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world. And now in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, we would actually be the other stars, the other lights in the firmament of heaven. We are the image of them because we have to give light also. But we are not as great as Yahushua Jesus, nor as we as great as the Father. And so in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so we give light as the stars, the lights in the firmament of heaven, give light. Yeshua, Jesus, we have seen, said that he is the light of the world as long as he is in the world. That was Gospel of John chapter 9, verse 5. And we saw in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, that he came at a time when people walked in darkness. And so he gave light but during the evening, during the nighttime, spiritually. And this is why it was said in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And so the glory of the Lord, that is now the Almighty, the Father, is risen upon thee. Because after that, the moon 
is done shining the light in the darkness, the glory comes and the morning comes and the sun now arises upon them. Getting back to Genesis chapter one, the evening and then the morning, the rising of the sun, the evening and the morning, which came after, are the first day. And so with the morning comes the rising of the sun, the glory of the Lord rises upon thee. Here in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And so arise, shine, for thy light is come. So the light came. The light that the moon was going to give, it shone in the darkness. And now what follows is the glory of the morning. And it's the glory of the Lord now, the Father that rises upon thee, because the Father is associated with the sun, the light that shines in the daytime. And so in verse 2, still in Isaiah chapter 60, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, at which time we're going to need the light from the moon, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord, the Father, shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And so after the evening will come the morning. Now, if you're understanding things spiritually, when I say that the Father will rise and shine the light of the sun, it's also referring to the Lord himself, to the second coming. But at the second coming, you can associate Yeshua, Jesus, to the Father in that he is no longer... He is no longer bearing that sinful flesh that made him not good because his body is glorified. And so that's the image that we have here. Yeshua, Jesus returns, and we can consider now that he is the son, S-U-N, of righteousness, and his glory comes with the morning after that the evening is over. And so the moon, with a lesser glory, touching on the things of the flesh, gave light in the darkness, and the people who walked in darkness saw a great light. But then when he returns, now he has the glory of the Father in that he is no longer touching on the things of the flesh. And he gives light as the Son gives light with a greater glory, with a glorified body that does not touch on the things of the flesh. And now the glory of the Lord, according to verse 1, is risen upon thee. In the book of Malachi chapter 4, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Verse 2, and this is the verse that interests me, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise. The morning is coming now, after that the evening is done. The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So you see the beautiful image here. After the evening comes the morning. And Yeshua, Jesus, as he partook in the things of the flesh at his first coming, bore the nature of the Son of God, which was of a lesser glory, touching on the things of the flesh, having a lesser glory, in that form than he would with a glorified body where he can bear now the glory of the father and put on the image of the son of righteousness now some of you may say wait a minute you're equating jesus the son to the father you're making that jump i'm talking about the relative glories of them because ultimately it is one spirit that we are dealing with. The spirit of Jesus Christ is the spirit of God. The spirit in the Son is the spirit of the Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 tells us that God was in Christ. And so the spirit of God was in Christ, where God is a spirit. And back at Malachi chapter 4, we had spoken about Verse 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And so the morning time comes, and the sun rises, the sun of righteousness, it arises with healing in his wings. 
And so at a time of spiritual darkness, the light of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, shined and it brought a message of hope. And those who will cling to it, when the morning rises and the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness comes with the morning, after that the time of darkness is done and vanquished, then those who have put their faith in that sun of righteousness see the morning. Then those who fear the name of the Lord, they see the morning rising and the sun of righteousness coming to them to bring healing in his wings. And so all this to say that the spiritual image I'm talking about is about the return of Yeshua, Jesus, but this time bearing the glory of the Son, the glory of the Father, to bring the morning light. Whereas prior he had come in a time of spiritual darkness and had shined the light of the moon, being of a lesser glory because he was in the flesh, touching on the things of the flesh, and that made him not good. And because, that's Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, because he had said, don't call me good when I'm touching on the things of the flesh, it put him in the hierarchy in a lower position where he had lesser glory than the son, lesser glory than the father's glory. Because again, we had seen that God is the head of Christ. The father is the head of the son. And that pointed back to the sun and the moon being great lights, but one being greater than the other. The glory of the sun associated with the glory of the Father being greater than the glory of the moon associated with the glory of the Son of God, who touches on the things of the flesh. But yet he has a greater glory than the general stars, and that's us being lights in the world. And so we had seen in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, that indeed we are the light of the world. And interestingly enough, being disciples of Yeshua Jesus, we likewise shine our light in a time of darkness because we continue to spread the message of the gospel even though Yeshua Jesus has ascended to the heaven. He said, I am the light of the world while I am in the world. And now it's up to us to continue shining that light because 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. But yet we are amongst the people in darkness, and we shine our light so that they can see it. If we add verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And so we do not sleep during these times of darkness, but rather we watch and wait until the rising of the sun, until the coming of the morning, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And so the night time is a spiritual time of sin, of wickedness. But though we are in it, we are separate from it, because we shine our light as children of light in the image of our master, Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And so indeed, we are the light of the world, though we be also living in a time of darkness. So I was saying we're in the world, but we're separate from the world. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hateth you. And so we're in the world, hated by the world, because they are in the night, and we are lights, shining our light in that wickedness, in that night, until the time that the morning will come and the sun will shine. And so to show you now the glory of the sun associated with the glory of the Father, and this glory comes at the return of the Lord, this glory comes when the time of darkness is over. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So the sun is shining light as he is supposed to. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so the Lord now is shining light. The Lord is light. 
And if we go to the lexicon to look at Psalm 27, we see that the Lord is my light refers now to the glory of the Father. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. And so the psalmist is talking about Yahweh, the Father, being his light. And so now this is the light from the perspective of the sun, S-U-N, shining light. Amen. During the daytime. Because salvation comes with the morning. Restoration comes with the morning light. Magnificent. And so where we had Yeshua, Jesus, touching on the things of the flesh and associating him with the image of the moon being of a lesser glory than the glory of the Father, then do we have here Yahweh, the glory of the Father, shining his light, which is a light that is being shined in the daytime as opposed to the nighttime, the time where the glory is that of the glory of the sun, a lesser glory. And so you have the greater glory here of the sun, S-U-N, being shined by Yahweh in Psalm chapter 27, verse 1. We now go to Psalm chapter 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And this is just marvelous and beautiful. Now the Lord God is a sun, showing us again the association between the glory of the Father and the glory of the Son in the images that we are using. Let's go to the lexicon as well on that one. Psalm 84, 11. Psalm 84, 11. For Yahweh Elohim is a sun, oh, alleluia, and shield. Yahweh will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So you see here, it's Yahweh. So Yahweh, again, associated with the sun and the glory of the sun, the greater glory compared to the glory of Yahushua, Jesus, as the son of God, S-O-N of God, touching on the things of the flesh. The glory of the son, S-O-N, is lesser than the glory of the father, who is associated with the S-U-N, where these two can be associated with the sun and the moon, giving light, both of them, but at different moments in time. But yet, the evening and the morning, and this is the point that I'm getting to, yet the evening and the morning are part of the same day. Remember? So again, Psalm 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun. So as I was saying, the evening and the morning, they form one unit. Let's go back to the top. We are in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, the daytime, and the darkness he called night, the nighttime. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Remember now, the evening and the morning, the two of them together, were the first day. The first day being a unit. A day is one day. It is a unit. It is only one day. But it comprises two aspects, evening and morning. And now getting to the analogy that I want to make. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. How magnificent is that, brothers and sisters? I, the moon who is to shine light in darkness, and my Father, the sun who is to shine his light at the coming of the morning, the evening, and the morning are one day. As the evening and the morning are both required in terms of their actions, as the evening and the morning are both required so that we can speak of one day, we also need 
the light being shined by the moon in the time of wickedness and darkness, the nighttime, and the light being shined by the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness. To bring about the morning, we need both actions, and these two actions are actually the actions of one. I and my father are one. The sun and the moon are one in shining their light, and the two of them are the greatest. But they are one. Their actions of determining evening and morning constitute one day, one unit of a day, but that manifests by different times in terms of spiritual temperature. One day is made up of the evening and the morning. One day, a period of wickedness and a period of restoration, the evening and the morning. And light is being shined during both these moments of evening and morning, both required to make one day. And so in the one day, you have the one being, the Spirit of God, shining light through a vessel of flesh at the nighttime, the time of wickedness, the evening, and the same Spirit of God operating now through the glorified body of Christ upon the return, where he is no longer tainted by the things of sinful flesh with a greater glory that is akin to the glory of the Father to shine the light at the time of restoration. Are you understanding this, the spiritual image? The same spirit, it's one spirit, the spirit of God, indwelling the vessel of Christ to shine light with the glory, the lesser glory of the moon during the time of darkness and wickedness on earth. And we, the stars, will continue that work. But then after the evening, that time of darkness where, where the Spirit of God shines light through the vessel of flesh of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, after that time, the evening, the same Spirit of God now operates through the glorified body of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to shine light at the time of restoration when he comes as the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness that brings healing in his wings. And now the glory is that of the sun, greater than the glory of the moon. But though these two time periods, the evening and the morning, be different, they are one day. Though the actions of the Son of God, S-O-N, and the Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, be different in that they both shine light, but at different times, these two are one. It is the same Spirit operating both in the evening and both in the morning. And in the same manner that the same Spirit operates in the evening and in the morning, in the same manner the evening and the morning are one day. And the Son of God in the flesh, S-O-N, and the Son of Righteousness, the glorified Son of God, with the glory of the Father attached to him, they are one. Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. And so to try to recap, in Genesis chapter 1, we saw that there was light. Verse 5 we saw that the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning, both of them taken together as a unit, they were the first day. First day, one day, a unit of a day, but comprising two aspects. One that is dark, the evening, and one that is light, the morning. But these two aspects together are needed to constitute the first day, a single unit of a day. Amen? Further, we saw, still in Genesis chapter 1, that there were lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the daytime, the light time, from the night, the dark time. Further, we saw, still in Genesis chapter 1, now at verse 14, that lights are in the firmament of the heaven to divide the daytime from the nighttime. Understanding that a full 24-hour day has both 
a time of light and a time of darkness, a daytime and a nighttime. And so there are lights that give light. And they will give light in the nighttime. We can't see them during the daytime. We saw that it was important to understand and discriminate the word day, meaning 24-hour day, or meaning the time where there is light, the daytime, different from the 24-hour period, which contains both the daytime and the nighttime. Verse 15, we saw that the mission of the lights in the firmament was to give light upon the earth. And verse 16, we saw that there are two great lights above the stars, and this is the image of us, the stars, as light in the world. There are two great stars, and they have between themselves different glories, one having a greater light to rule the day, and that's the image of the glory of the Father, and the lesser light to rule the night, and that's the image of the glory of the Son, S-O-N, of God, who partook in the things of the flesh, and not being good in that form, he is saying that he has a lesser glory than the Father in pure form, who is a pure spirit, not touching on the things of the flesh. He made the stars also, that's us. And so we have lights in the firmament of the heaven giving light, that's what they do. All the stars and the sun and the moon as well, they give light. But the two great lights, about them, we saw that the sun and the moon both gave light, likewise. But one has a greater glory in the image of the Father, and one has a lesser glory in the image of the Son of God, S-O-N, because he touches on the things of the flesh. However, I made the point that you need to remember that the evening and the morning make up one day. The evening and the morning make up one unit. And though the time of action in the evening that belongs to the Son of God, S-O-N, and the time of action that belongs to the glorified Son of God with the glory of the Father, in the morning, these two time periods, they need to be taken as one unit, as one day. And the glories thereof, the glories associated with shining light in the evening and shining light in the morning, they are one and the same action, but taken at different moments. In the same day that the evening and the morning are one day, the shining of light in the evening and in the morning is one shining of light, and it's one light. But being done at different moments, there is a different glory that can be associated with the action of shining light, whether it be shined by the sun or whether it be shined by the glorified sun in the image of the glory of the Father. And this is why we were saying in Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 30, that I and my Father are one. The same Spirit operating in Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, touching on the things of the flesh, the Son of God, S-O-N, shining His light in darkness, in spiritual darkness, that same Spirit is the same Spirit operating, but now with the glory equal to that of the Father. When the Lord returns, with the glory of the Father to bring healing and restoration on earth as the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness. And so that glory is one that can be associated with the glory of the Father or of the glorified body of Yehoshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. It's the same spirit. And so that one spirit has two actions in terms of shining light at different moments during the evening and during the morning, but it's the same spirit operating. And therefore, it brings us back to the concept of the evening and the morning making up one day, one day, and not two. And so the Son of God, Yoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ said in Gospel of John chapter 9, verse 5, that as long as I am in the world, I'm the light of the world. But he's shining his light in the darkness of this world and so he can be associated with the glory of the moon. We had seen in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, that indeed he was a light to people who walked in darkness. And they saw a great light, as the moon is defined as a great light in Genesis chapter 1. And then in Isaiah chapter 60, we saw that once the light is come, then there is a glory that follows as the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. 
And so there is a hinting here of restoration and the morning to come now after the evening. Because in verse 2, the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. But now it will be the glory that is even the glory of the Son, S-U-N, the glory associated with the Father or associated with the glorified body of Yeshua HaMashiach. Verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising, because it's morning time. And so after we discuss the glory of the moon and the lesser glory of the Son of God who touched on the things of the flesh, we spoke about Psalm chapter 27, speaking on the Lord, and that is the, the Father, speaking on the Lord being light and salvation. And we saw in the lexicon that this Lord being spoken of here is actually Yahweh. And so this confirms that you can perceive that light of restoration as being one shined by the greater glory, shined by the Father, shined by the glorified Yehoshua, Jesus Christ, because it is a light that brings the morning. It is no longer a light shined in the evening and psalm 84 had confirmed that at verse 11 for the lord god is a sun and shield and so now if we go back to genesis chapter 1 verse 5 god called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day first day one day that is an aspect and another aspect is first being first of many days you see, and so there is a first day and therefore there will be a last day also. And so as we equated evening and morning being two facets of one day, which is one unit, and associated that with the action of the son and the father being one action, in the same manner, we can also understand and perceive it as such the first day is the first day and there is also a last day. And so as we had established, a day can be a thousand years. And so now another perspective that we can have is that this first day implies that there will be a last day. And where there would be a last day, then the action of shining light upon the earth would be over. Because remember that the lights in the firmament of heaven they were to shine light upon the earth. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 15. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And so their mission is comprised in a time period. That is the time during which there will be earth. And so we saw that the light is shined at evening time first, and then it shines in the morning time where there is restoration. And so the action of shining light, it is comprised in one day, but a day can also be a thousand years. And so after the thousand year reign, what happens? Revelation 21, what happens when we have the earth passing away? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And so the mission of the stars that were to shine their light on the earth, there's no more need for it. Verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light, was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And so the holy Jerusalem has a light. We go to verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And so you see here that the glory of God lightens it, meaning the ministry of the sun and the moon 
it's over. And so the glory of God lightens it. The Lamb is the light thereof. This means, brothers and sisters, that one day was required for the evening and the morning, for the actions of shining light and darkness, and for the actions of shining light for the purposes of restoring, that is the morning. And that was the first day. But on the last day, we find out, and he who will be shining that light, therefore, in the new Jerusalem, says this in Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And so from the first day until the last day, all the actions of shining light, they are accomplished by the Alpha and the Omega. And starting at Alpha, the light will be shined in the darkness, and eventually it will be shined upon restoration. And when you get to Omega, the light is shined in the New Jerusalem. Same spirit, still acting, the same Almighty God, acting in different seasons, acting in the evening and acting in the morning, though this be the action of one day, though this be the action of one spirit. And that same spirit was in the Son of God, and that same spirit was God, such that the Father and the Son, it can be said that they are one. Just like the evening and the morning, they make up one day. And the action of shining light in the evening and in the morning, it's one action of shining light, one action at different times. And it is equated to one day. And so there you have it, brothers and sisters, spiritual images concerning the daytime, the nighttime, and as well the glory of the Son, the glory of the Father, and how the evening and the morning are one day and how the actions of shining light by the Son and the Father, that are one action of shining light, and we partake in it also as lights in the world. But the one day has the two actions. The one spirit has the two actions of shining light at different moments in time, but it's one spirit. And the spirit, when it touches on the things of the flesh, has a lesser glory, akin to the moon compared to the sun. There is one light that is sent to the people in darkness. And there is a promise of light coming back with the glory of the Lord rising at the time of morning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Gospel of John chapter 10 verse 30, I and my Father are one. Both shining light at different times, but the action of the same Spirit. Evening, morning, one day. Light shined in the darkness in the evening. Light shined in the restoration of the morning. One Spirit, one action. May you be blessed, brothers and sisters, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Amen.